Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Emily Sue. And I'm Britton Clenet. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Back to normal after police defuse massive wartime bomb that paralyzed Happy Valley. Cruise passengers and travel agency agreed to chase ship operator accused of lying to cut their holiday short. HKM achieved warns of uncertain property market with sales down but not prices. Buildings and roads that were closed overnight opened in Happy Valley this morning as police experts defused a massive wartime bomb dug up by workers at a construction site. More than 2,000 people who had been evacuated from the danger zone were able to return and traffic is back to normal now. Two small explosions were heard and smoke could be seen at a construction site on Queens Road East in Happy Valley early this morning as police bomb disposal experts disarmed a massive Second World War explosive found yesterday. The 900 kilo bomb is believed to have been dropped by U.S. warplanes targeting Japanese facilities during the occupation of Hong Kong. The 1.7 metre long device with a diameter of 0.6 metres landed vertically on soft ground and failed to detonate. After lying underground for more than 60 years, the device was unearthed yesterday by workers at the construction site of a hotel. During a two and a half hour operation overnight, bomb disposal experts managed to cut through the thick shell and slowly burn the explosives. Yun Hon Wing from the Police Explosive Ordnance Disposal Bureau said the process took longer than expected because the bomb was still in a relatively good condition and packed with 450 kilos or 1,000 pounds of live TNT. It was deemed too dangerous to detonate. It's a high quality steel. That's why it takes a while for us to, to cut through. After the two cutting phases, then we start to burn the explosive out by a controlled um, burning method with low temp with a relatively low temperature, right? I'm talking about 1,000 pounds of explosive TNT in good quality, all right? Uh, luckily, the whole bombs is now rendered safe, right? Totally intact, uh, nothing damaged. There was no damage to the any property nearby or any um, injury at all. So after all, I would grade this is a very successful operation. As a precaution, the experts checked the site to see if there were any more bombs lying around. There's no other suspicious object within this site, and this is extremely rare to have another one within such a small area. There was a build-up of traffic after the area was deemed safe to be reopened to the public this morning. Long queues formed at bus stops as traffic became congested on the reopened roads as well as the Aberdeen Tunnel. In a full-scale emergency last night, more than 2,000 people were evacuated from buildings within a 200-metre radius of the bomb site. The danger zone included the Cosmo and Cosmopolitan Hotels, the Xinhua News Agency building, Queen Elizabeth Stadium and Tang Shu Kin Hospital. The buildings reopened this morning after being declared off limits for 16 hours. The uh, resident staff and the use, road user uh, has cooperated with the police, listened to our advice so we can uh, finish the, uh, the whole operations uh, uh, by 8.30 this morning. It's not uncommon for workers to dig up unexploded wartime bombs in Hong Kong, but this was one of the biggest. Passengers have given up their demand for compensation from their travel agency after their holiday cruise to Vietnam was cut short. After marathon talks today, they have now decided to chase the cruise operators who are accused of lying about a sunken ship blocking the way. ATV's Raymond Yearn reports. There was a media frenzy outside the Travel Industry Council's office in North Point this afternoon. As Miramar's travel representatives and passengers from the Costa Victoria cruise ship arrived for a meeting. While negotiations were held behind closed doors, the mood was called out during a photo call beforehand. Miramar Travel General Manager Alex Lee was sitting opposite six passengers, selected to represent those seeking compensation. But missing from the table were representatives of the vessel's operator, Costa Cruises, which is now under heavy scrutiny after appearing to have fabricated the story that triggered yesterday's row. Travelers were shown two statements, one from a travel agency, 
and another from port authorities on Tuesday when the captain announced they could not dock at Ha Long Bay in Vietnam because a sunken barge had blocked off access to the bay. Footage taken by viewers showed they did reach the area, but no port call was made due to the incident, and the ship eventually made its way back to Hong Kong. Responding to inquiries from local media, travel agencies in Ha Long Bay said there was no sunken ship near the area. One local hotel operator told ATV over the phone that the last shipping accident there was three years ago. This prompted the cruise passengers to step up their demands for a refund. This woman said before the meeting that they wanted a third of the two fees back as they missed out on one of the three stops promised in the itinerary. She also accused Miramar Travel's management of using smear tactics by describing the passengers as bullies. DAB lawmaker Ann Chang, who was one of the affected travellers, was also present at the meeting. Speaking on radio earlier this morning, Chang defended the travellers for refusing to leave the ship and delaying the next batch of passengers, saying that was the only bargaining ship they had. She claimed she did not support the radical protest, but felt obliged to stay and resolve the dispute after seeing passengers become increasingly emotional. The last group of protesting passengers got off the cruise liner at 10.30 last night, more than 16 hours after it docked in Chim Sa Cho. Raymond Young, ATV News. The Monetary Authority has warned that Hong Kong's property market remains clouded with uncertainty and a sharp plunge in sales has not been matched by a drop in prices. Authority Chief Norman Chen cautioned about pressure on liquidity and local interest rates as the U.S. Central Bank continues to trim its economic stimulus program. The head of Hong Kong's de facto central bank, Norman Chan, gave lawmakers an update this morning on the state of the city's property market. The Monetary Authority chief told the Financial Affairs Panel that property transactions last year plunged up to 40 percent from their peak as a result of the government's cooling measures and mortgage tightening. But that dive in sales was not matched by a significant fall in prices. Housing prices remain very sticky. There are very little adjustments uh, in the last 12 months. Uh, a little bit of uh, reduction in the uh, luxurious sector, but very little change in the mass market of small to medium-sized flats. Chang could not say whether prices have entered a downward spiral, but warned that the local property market still faces uncertainty. He's also expecting mortgage interest rates to go up this year. Chen warned that Hong Kong will feel the pinch as the U.S. Federal Reserve tapers its bond-buying program. The asset purchases were part of the American Central Bank's efforts to stimulate the U.S. economy in the wake of the 2008 recession by keeping interest rates low. Cheap credit encouraged investors to move funds to Hong Kong. 100 billion U.S. dollars flowed in, boosting the stock market. Given the tapering program starting, uh, Eventually, uh, the huge amount of money that flew into Hong Kong in 2008 and 2009 will flow out. That would give upward pressure to liquidity and also uh, interest rates locally. On the issue of fake banknotes, the Monetary Authority chief said up to Tuesday, 258 counterfeit $1,000 bills were discovered. The fake Bank of China and HSBC 2003 series notes started to surface in Hong Kong and Macau in December. Chan said all $1,000 notes available at banks and dispensed by ATMs have been verified as real. But the authority and banks will withdraw $1,000 notes from the 2003 series as quickly as possible and replace them with 2010 series notes, which are harder to copy. It's time to bring out those warm clothes once again as the observatory says temperatures will start dropping from tonight. A cold front in Guangdong is heading south and expected to push the mercury to as low as 9 degrees early next week. The mild weather over the Lunar New Year holiday may have lulled many into thinking that winter is over. But the city's weather forecasters poured cold water over that today. A cold front over the Linden areas of uh, Guangdong is uh, crossing Guangzhou. It is expected to move southwards uh, steadily and then uh, reach the coastal areas tonight. As for Hong Kong, the, the, for the weather tonight, uh, it will become significantly cooler. The observatory is expecting the mercury to dip to between 15 and 19 degrees tonight, with some rain patches adding to the gloom. And while it will be cloudy with low visibility tomorrow, the crunch comes on Monday at the start of a new work and school week.
Uh, the weather is expected to remain cold uh, next week with the minimum temperature uh, reaching to 10 degrees or lower. On Tuesday, the temperature is likely to drop further to 9 degrees in urban areas and it will be a couple of degrees lower in the new territories. Looks like you'll have to dig out those coats and sweaters again to bundle up for the chill next week. Snow in many parts of the mainland caused transport chaos as tens of millions of people returned to work at the end of the Lunar New Year holiday. At an airport in Henan province, delays caused by heavy snow triggered a riot. The end of the biggest holiday on the Chinese calendar turned nasty at Zhengzhou Airport in Henan province last night as passengers angry with flight delays caused by snowstorms became aggressive. The frustrated travellers, part of the tens of millions returning to work after the week-long Lunar New Year holiday, charged towards check-in desks. They threw objects at signs and smashed computers. The airport was closed for more than five hours before reopening at 10 p.m. The weather woes extended to other parts of the mainland as well, paralyzing traffic and affecting the annual mass migration of workers. It was relatively calm in Beijing, which welcomed its first snowfall this winter. Beijing residents are hoping the change in weather conditions will ease air pollution, which is a big health threat in the capital. President Xi Jinping is expected to snub the Japanese Prime Minister when the two share the international stage tonight at the opening of the Sochi Winter Olympics in Russia. China is expecting Russia's backing in its row with Japan as a trade-off for Beijing's high-profile show of support for the Games. President Xi Jinping was the first major world leader to arrive in the Russian Black Sea resort of Sochi yesterday. He met his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin in a show of support after what has been a controversial run-up to the Winter Games because of security concerns and Western criticism of Moscow's policies on homosexuals. She expressed confidence that, with Russia's careful preparations, the Sochi Winter Olympics will be a splendid and unforgettable sports event. The trade-off was reflected in a Xinhua News Agency report saying Putin had agreed to join China in marking the 70th anniversary of the wartime victories against Japan to educate future generations on issues such as the serious crimes committed by the Japanese imperialist military in China and other Asian countries. That was clearly aimed at Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who will be sharing the international stage with Xi at the opening ceremony of the Games later tonight. She is expected to snub Abe, who has taken relations with Beijing to an all-time low by visiting a controversial shrine in Tokyo honoring Japan's four dead along with war criminals. That's in addition to recent flare-ups in their long-running disputes over rival territorial claims in the East China Sea. Abe has also angered Moscow. Just hours before leaving for Sochi, he attended a rally in Tokyo, demanding the return of four northern islands Russia seized from Japan in the closing days of the Second World War. Still to come on ATV's main news, stars pay tribute to Jay Leno, who bowed out after 22 years as host of Tonight Show. Security extra tight as Russia's Russian city hosts Winter Olympics.